Now, it doesn't matter if you've been collecting vinyl records for years or if you're, you're new to the hobby. There's a lot of bad advice out there. And some of that bad advice comes from audiophiles who swear up and down that they know it all. Nobody, I mean, nobody knows it all. And running this channel exposes me to a lot, and I do mean a lot of bad advice. And that's usually when I'm researching something because I'm the first to admit I don't know it all, but I also see it in some of the comments too. So I've made a short list of some of that bad advice that you can completely ignore and why you can ignore it. So let's say we ruffle some feathers. I'm going to do this in no particular order. So let's start with this expensive equipment. The advice goes like this. You need expensive equipment to enjoy vinyl. Do you? Seriously? No, you do not. Now I've said this a million times and I'll say it again. Stay away from the cheap turntables that cost maybe about as much as a, a couple of new vinyl records because there's a reason that they're cheap and quality does matter. But you know, that being said, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars to have an enjoyable vinyl record experience. You can go out and buy a very good turntable and pair of powered speakers for less than 300 bucks. And sure, there are some expensive setups that will completely blow your mind as far as the sound goes. But don't, and I, please don't let anybody tell you that your ATLP60, you know, Audio-Technica turntable and set of powered edifier speakers sucks. They don't. They're cool. And I could talk about this forever, but I'm not going to. We're going to move on to the next one. And the next one is cleaning. Specifically things or advice that tells you that you can use things like wood glue or normal household cleaners like, say, Windex or even WD-40. Seriously, I've seen a recommendation that it's okay to use WD-40 on your records. Now, just do a quick search in some of these things and, and you'll find it. And thankfully, this isn't widespread advice, but if you're new to the hobby and you run across this, you might not know better. So please stick to cleaning solutions that were made for vinyl records. Oh, you can even make your own. I make my own and I'm thinking of doing a video. Maybe that's the next one I'll do about what is in my cleaning solution, the liquid that I use. I'm sure that one's going to raise some eyebrows. I'm a little hesitant to do it, to be honest, but I, what the hell, I'll probably do it anyway. So the next one that I want to talk about is 180 gram records. Now I'm not going to go into a whole rant about 180 gram records. I've done that and you probably don't want to hear me do it again. All I will say is I tend to stay away from them. They're expensive and they don't live up to the hype. Now one bit of hype actually comes in the form of advice and the advice goes, buy heavier records because it will improve the sound and the sound quality. It does not. It doesn't matter if your record's 140 grams or 180 grams. A 140 gram record can sound just as good as a 180 gram record, probably better in a lot of cases. What equates to good sound quality is taking care of your records. I will concede that a heavier record sits heavier on the platter. And that may, and I stress may, help with external vibrations, but that's really minimal at best. And if you're concerned with that, just go ahead and get a record weight for those 140 gram records. 180 gram or 200 gram records aren't better, not by a long shot. But I'm not saying that they're bad. They're not bad at all. Again, they're just not better. Now, the next one I get our piece of advice, I hear a lot, and I actually get a lot of questions on this one, and it has to do with scratched records. The advice is, that if a record is scratched, don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, that's not entirely true. It might be true, say, for minor scratches or surface blemishes, but it's not true for deep scratches, especially those scratches that cause your stylus to either skip back or skip forward. Anything that your stylus comes into contact with that causes it to react violently like that is not a good thing. And it can, if it's over an extended period of time or happens consistently, it really can hurt your stylus. Your stylus and your cantilever are sensitive parts of your cartridge. They have to be in order to you know, vibrate properly. While a minor scratch is probably not going to ever pose a problem, a bad scratch can. So if you are flipping through the bargain bin at a thrift shop or a used record store, or even say a yard sale, 
So take a look at the record before buying it because you don't want an inexpensive purchase to have expensive consequences. And the next one I'm bringing up is because I've actually given this next piece of advice and I've changed my mind on it a couple times actually. And it concerns tone controls. Tone controls are not the tools of the devil. I once did a video where I said, don't use tone controls. And then I did a video where I changed my mind. And that happens a lot in this hobby, especially with me. But anyway, as far as tone controls go, they are not bad. Forget anything I've ever said in the past. There is nothing wrong with tone controls. While it is true that you will see higher end equipment without tone controls, and the thinking behind excluding tone controls is the experience is to get closer to the sound source. And if there's a problem or, or something's harsh sounding or not enough bass, then it's probably a problem with the equipment or the pressing itself. And maybe, you know, some of that is true. I mean, I grew up with tone controls. So I use them all the time. My Galleon TS120 amp has tone controls. I almost never touch them, but I'm not adverse to enabling those tone controls and using them. If I come across a pressing that's too bright and everything else I play sounds wonderful except that one pressing and it hurts my ears and gives me listening fatigue trying to get through it, well then turn by all means. I'm going to turn on those tone controls and I'm going to use them. I mean, life's too short to put up with bad sounds, especially if a, a little tweak of the tone can help with that. And I do want to say this too. I love tube amps and a lot of folks do. And I love tube swapping and a lot of folks love tube swapping too. And I'm going to say this and I know it's going to probably have some comments that's telling me I'm wrong, but that's okay. I've been wrong before. But swapping tubes is a form of tone control. I promise you, I have tubes that I'll put in some KT88s that are a little bit bright sounding and I have KT88s that are warm sounding and have better bass. It really depends on a lot of things, depends on the equipment. And if it didn't, if everything sounded the same, we wouldn't have different options to choose from. So when you hear advice from someone that says you shouldn't be using tone controls, and if you do, it means that there's a problem with your equipment or your source or whatever the case may be, just ignore it. Do whatever you want. Use the tone controls. It's not going to hurt anything like a bad scratch would or some ill-advised cleaning methods. Now, while I'm on the subject of this sort of advice when it comes to it comes to the equipment, I want to clear something up too, that I, this is advice I give all the time. Every time I talk about a turntable that has a built-in phono stage or preamp, I always advise to get an external one. Now, I do believe that. I mean, that is the way I think you'll get the best sound is by having an external phono stage, but you don't need one. And I have had folks think that they need to go out and buy one if they are, say their U-turn Orbit has a you know built-in preamp. It's okay, use that built-in preamp. It's there for a reason. You don't have to spend the money. If you want to, by all means, go do it. There's wonderful phono stages. I absolutely love my Super MM phono stage. It's the best thing, one of the best things I've added for a piece of equipment from Eric Audio. I did a video on that too. But the point is, there is nothing wrong with using a built-in preamp or built-in phono stage. But I will say, it's if you have the money, it is a better investment. I think the point I'm trying to make is do what's best for you and do what's best for your budget. I have a couple more. I'm going to keep the next one brief, but I do want to touch on it because it comes up quite a lot. And... It's about anti-skate. The advice is, and you will see this one too, is that anti-skate doesn't matter. Well, it really does. It matters quite a lot. Now, if you're not sure what anti-skate is, it's the corrective measure that you apply to offset the horizontal force that's pushing against your tone arm as it's tracking through the groove. It's probably the best way I can put it. When a record spins, a force pulls the needle toward the center of the record, causing it to lean too much to one side of the groove. Now, this can lead to uneven sound where, say, one channel sounds a little louder than another channel. It can also result in uneven wear on the stylus because it's coming into contact with the groove on one side more than the other, and also the groove itself. Think of it like riding a bike on a slope. If the slope leans to the right, your bike would naturally drift to the right. So to keep going straight, you get a correct for that. So you need to steer a bit to the left. Anti-skate works the same way. 
It applies a little force in the opposite direction of that inward pull. So it balances things out so that the needle stays centered in the groove. And this helps the record play evenly, sounding better and protecting both the needle and the record from uneven wear. Some turntables do allow you to set the anti-skate, and the manual will usually tell you to set it to the same number that your vertical tracking force is set at. While that's not perfect, it's better than ignoring it. So by all means, follow what your manual says. Some companies like U-Turn will set the anti-skate for you on some of their models, and I've tested them using the Wally Skater, and they nail it. They're a great company, and that's not a paid endorsement by any means. I really do like that company. I use their second generation Orbit in my review room. I actually have two of their tables. One I bought a few years ago, it's a first generation. Okay, I have one more, and I wasn't going to mention this one because it's, it's ridiculous, but I'm going to bring it up anyway because it still cracks me up. I don't even know if I'll get through this without laughing, but the advice was don't play your record too loud because you might damage it. According to this person, when you pump up the volume on your equipment and you're playing a record, that will exert excessive force on the stylus or cause your stylus to exert excessive force on the record to make it play louder. I'm going to leave that one alone. I think you know that's not true. So I'm going to end it on that note. You know, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. You know, I would love to have you come back and you can be notified of new episodes. And as always, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, enjoy your records and take care of yourself.